This is Dr. Howard Strassler, and today I'll be talking to you about the single visit fiber reinforced fixed bridge fabricated with ribbon THM. Uh, you'll be seeing the materials that we use to fabricate these single visit fiber bridges. Uh, we'll also be uh, looking at the technique, the technique that's specific to get a durable, clinically successful result. The ribbon kit itself contains the fiber ribbons that we need to fabricate the bridge. It has a special scissors to cut the lengths that we need. And in the case report today, we'll be looking at the replacement of a mandibular central incisor. There are lots of options to select from. Uh, a fixed bridge, conventional fixed bridge, a removable partial denture, and this tooth was lost due to periodontal disease. You can see the bone loss on the radiograph, and the patient was wearing a removable partial denture. We're going to apply a dental dam uh, to the circumstance and clean the teeth. Clean the teeth thoroughly, either with uh, prophylaxis paste or using a paste of hummus. We're going to clean the facial and lingual surfaces and the interproximal surfaces. We're then going to rinse the abrasive off the teeth and dry the teeth thoroughly. We want to have a good bonding surface of the enamel to get our most durable, long-lasting uh, periodontal splint result, fiber bridge result. We made a composite pontic previously uh, using an impression of the patient's partial denture. We created an index with polyvinyl siloxane. Here you see the pontic of composite shaped and a channel, a groove created on the lingual surface. The channel is the same width as the ribbon that we'll be using. In this case, a three millimeter wide ribbon. You can see the ribbon sitting on the lingual. Uh, this is the piece that's been pre-cut. And at times, we can actually use the natural tooth pontic that's extracted. And the same day that we remove the tooth, we can create a pontic by cutting the length from the incisal to the gingival area of the extraction site. Once again, a channel is prepared on the lingual surface. Now we're going to be trying in the pontic using the polyvinyl siloxane index. This is a composite pontic that we fabricated prior to the patient coming in. We're trying it in, making sure that it's seated well, uh, and that it displaces the rubber dam, the dental dam, on the gingival surface. We need a certain length to the fiber. We're getting the length using a piece of dental floss on the facial surface. This length is for the uh, periodontal splint we'll be placing from canine to canine. We'll cut a second piece of floss for the pontic connector. That'll go from two class three preparations on the uh, lingual surfaces. It's a shorter piece, and in fact, we're using a double fiber. We'll use the special scissors to cut the ribbon THM, two millimeter, to the length that we need. I had said three millimeter, we decided to use a two. The longer ribbon is for the periodontal splint, the shorter ribbon is for the uh, connector. We're creating a sandwich with resins in order to get a strong beam effect. We wet the ribbon with the ribbon wetting resin, and then we'll remove the excess resin uh, using a uh, patient napkin. Notice that when we wet the ribbon, it goes from a white opaque to an aesthetic translucent material. We blot the excess wetting resin from the fiber using a paper towel so it's only light, lightly wetted. We're looking at the periodontal splint length and the pontic connector length. We cover the ribbon so it doesn't prematurely white cure, and then we go and we roughen the interproximal surfaces of the adjacent teeth. We're preparing into the enamel with a high-speed diamond with a light water spray in order to roughen and clean these surfaces. The pontic surface itself is treated before bonding by applying a silane coupling agent to couple to the glass filler, and then we treat it with a resin adhesive that we air thin, but we don't light cure it at this time. The abutments on the facial interproximal areas that we prepared, we're going to etch for 30 seconds. We're then going to rinse and dry these surfaces. This is strictly for the placement of the pontic. Once we've etched these surfaces and they're dry, they have the frosty appearance. 
will then paint adhesive resin to the pontic, will paint adhesive on the enamel surfaces, and then we'll place composite resin, a nano-hybrid nano composite, to both the pontic and to the teeth themselves. We position the pontic using our polyvinyl vinyl, vinyl siloxane uh, template. There are many different ways that we can, can place it. The composite's placed and adapted on the facial surface to stabilize the pontic in an aesthetic location. We're checking to make sure that the alignment uh, and the axial inclination is correct. We can shape the composite using a plastic filling instrument uh, before we light cure. Keep in mind, this is the procedure for the pontic placement first, and then we'll proceed to the rest of the procedure. Once the pontic is in place, we'll be placing the fiber as if we were doing a periodontal splint. We light cure the composite for 15 seconds to 20 seconds on the facial surface. After light curing, in fact, tacking the pontic in place, we remove the index, and now we're ready to go ahead with the clinical procedure. Another alternative pontic placement technique is using some cotton pliers to hold the tooth in place. Once again, the teeth have been etched and the composite placed. We're creating lingual class three preparations mesial of both, on both abutment teeth in line with the channel that we created in the pontic. These class threes will allow us to put the shorter piece of the rib on into the channel, the groove that we created in the pontic, and into the preparations. We do the class threes after we create, place the pontic to have them in alignment. We know that we'll get improved stabilization with preparation on the facial surfaces of the teeth. In fact, we'll create a 180 degree wrap of the composite on the facial surfaces and when we bond the lingual surfaces with the rib on material. Uh, one of the reasons for creating these uh, barrel in preparations on the facial is to stabilize these periodontally involved teeth so that when we place the splint, we don't displace the teeth facially. We also stop the teeth from rotating and uh, in fact we create this wrap that stops the teeth from moving. Keep in mind periodontally involved teeth not only ship facially but they also torque and twist in the socket. We etch the lingual surfaces for 30 seconds. We etch into the tooth preparations as well. We're using a phosphoric acid a 32% phosphoric acid onto the lingual surfaces of the teeth. We etch the prepared facial surfaces as well uh, for 30 seconds, 15 to 30 seconds on the enamel. And we're going to be placing the composite on the facial surfaces first uh, to stabilize these teeth from any possible movement when the splint's placed. We rinse and dry, rinse the teeth for 10 seconds with an air water spray or with water. Remove all the etching from the teeth, make sure there's no blue etchant anywhere, and then we dry the teeth off to a frosty appearance. The enamel will have a frosty dried appearance of the etching. We're ready now with the teeth etched to place an anatomic block out. We've etched the lingual surfaces, we've etched the class three preparations, we vetch the teeth themselves, ready for the splinting uh, and the stabilization of the, uh, of the pontic. We're going to create an anatomic block out by placing a heavy or medium body fast setting polyvinyl siloxane. We're syringing it into the interproximal area directly from the mixing tip using a special uh, syringe tip that fits into the end of the mixing tip. Uh, this anatomic block out will minimize the finishing that was usually required early on when we de did these types of fiber splints. We do it after the etching to assure that we have no trapped moisture in the block out material. We've anatomically filled the interproximal embrasure, gingival embrasure space